Of all the news trickling out of Mobile World Congress this year, the most interesting were either foldables or rollables. It's a showcase of a lot of eye-catching phones and devices that don't often make it to America, but that doesn't mean we can't look on an envy or treat it as a possible preview of the technology that shapes future phones here in the US. One of the first foldables we saw out of MWC this year was Oppo's Find N2 Flip. This thing is basically the Chinese company's version of Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4, except its external screen is in portrait instead of landscape orientation. It's currently the largest cover screen on a flip-style foldable at 3.26 inches. This makes the Find N2 Flip easier to use when framing up selfies with the device close, and thanks to its size, allows for more lines of messages to be read. Oddly though, the home screen here doesn't take advantage of the larger canvas and its clock widget actually uses a smaller font than the Galaxy Z Flip 4. The company did take pains to emphasize that the crease on the Find N2 Flip's screen is 65% less visible than the last generation. According to Engadget's UK bureau chief Matt Smith though, you can still see the little wrinkle, so... For those of us in the US, this is more of a theoretical exercise or comparison since the Oppo phone won't actually be available stateside, retailing only in Europe and China. If you still want more details on this device, make sure to check out Matt's hands-on. This week, we also learned that Honor's Magic VS is coming to more parts of the world. Specifically, it'll be coming to Europe for 1,599 euros, or about 1,690 US dollars. This is the first time since we saw a prototype in December that the company is sharing availability info outside of China. The Magic VS is similar to Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 4, which is to say that it is a regular size smartphone that opens up to become a roughly 8 inch tablet. It's not a brand new product at MWC, but it is nice to see more information about more foldable phones coming and giving Samsung some competition in the space. It's not just Oppo and Honor ramping up the competition either. Relatively lesser known phone maker Techno showed up at MWC with the Phantom V Fold, which is a more affordable foldable with fairly impressive specs. The Phantom V Fold has a 7.85 inch screen on the inside, with the company touting a virtually crease-free display, just like Oppo did. Senior editor Richard Lai said that at the right angle, the wrinkle is certainly not obvious and is better than Samsung's, although he did add that it's still not as good as his Xiaomi Mi Mix Fold 2. On the outside, the Phantom has a 6.42 inch Full HD panel as well as a round camera hump housing a triple sensor imaging system. The main and telephoto cameras are 50 megapixels while the ultra wide is 13 megapixels. There's also a pair of punch hole cameras on the two screens. The Phantom V Fold is powered by the same MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus processor as the one in the Oppo Find N2 Flip. And for the base model that comes with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, the company is asking $1,099. Compared to the Samsung and Oppo versions of tablet-sized foldables, that's hundreds of dollars less. But again, as with so many products that were launched at NWC this year, the Phantom V Fold won't be coming to the US. It'll be available to those in India, Latin America, and parts of Africa, which is areas where techno is typically active. The fact that we're reaching a point where foldables are starting to get relatively more affordable means, unfortunately, that they're going to become common. And therefore, they're about to become so passe. So 2022. In 2023, the hot buzzword is rollables. At least, based on the concept devices that Lenovo and Motorola brought to MWC. Motorola brought back its riser concept device, and this second version has a 5-inch display that rolls out to hit 6.5 inches when you need a larger canvas for a video or a long Best of Redditor updates post. The device that was shown off in Barcelona appeared to work, but multiple outlets like Ars Technica and TechCrunch expressed reservations about build quality, so don't be surprised if it takes forever for this sort of format to ever make it to market. It's not like Motorola and Lenovo are the first companies to try rolling screens anyway. Far from it. LG and TCL have made various prototypes showcasing different form factors with flexible, sliding, and rolling screens. In fact, LG's first rolling screen prototypes showed up as far back as CES 2014. 
It's clear, manufacturers know that smartphones have gotten good enough that most people don't want to buy a new one every year or two, and they're looking for a new shape that will entice shoppers this decade. The current camera and software race between Apple, Google, and Samsung is starting to induce yawns, and the new features they're adding aren't particularly exciting. Other phone makers have spent the last few years focusing on battery and charging tech, and this MWC, we saw more of that too. Xiaomi showed off a demo of 300 watt charging that could fully charge a device in just five minutes. Meanwhile, Realme shared global release information about its GT3 phone, which is compatible with 240 watt charging and can get completely juiced in just under 10 minutes. OnePlus also showcased a concept phone with a liquid cooling system that would allow improved performance and charging times. With the drops in temperature that this should bring, OnePlus could deliver boosts to games by 3 to 4 frames per second, as well as saving 30 to 45 seconds of charging time. Besides new formats and battery tech, we also saw companies focus on repairability and sustainability. The Nokia G22, for example, is the result of a collaboration between parent company HMD and iFixit, and it follows in the footsteps of Apple, Google, and Samsung in offering official repair guides and parts. As rights to repair bills get passed in more states in the US and elsewhere in the world, this looks to be a growing trend that could help us be more environmentally conscious. There was plenty of other news out of the show, including Xiaomi's wild concept AR glasses. So make sure you head on over to Engadget.com to get all of the details. And for more news and coverage of the world of consumer technology, make sure to subscribe to Engadget.